Hi there, Adrian here, mortgage broker based in Sydney. On this channel, we talk about all things finance, lending, and investments. And on this particular video, we're going to be discussing all things on buying land and building a house and construction. Okay, a little bit of this will overlap with house and land packages as well. And um, as you can see, we've got the property up in front of us, 6 the Crescent Helensburg 2508. Now, this is a suburb on the north side of Wollongong, very close to the south side of Sydney in the Sutherland Shire area. And it was a property that I built over about an 18 month period and then uh, sold it uh, most likely around five to six years ago. Now, um, you can see up the top right, there is a second new property right next to us. What happened was they actually built, they waited for us to build um, and they actually built as soon as we moved in. So we had the uh, amazing time of moving into a brand new property when they didn't build at the same time that we did. And we had a, almost an eight to 10 month period of having to deal with them build while we were living in the property. Also, um, they tried to get a couple of things past council on the right hand side uh, regarding the plans. Um, and we could tell that they were having some issues because we could see uh, two or three amendments through council. And every time an amendment got made, the neighbors got notified. And then what happened was um, to the right of that property on the corner was a, a much smaller house and they owned the three blocks. So what they did was they subdivided everything and sold two of the blocks. Now, when you're looking at these properties, they are on the north side of the block. Um, and you can see, look, you can't see much slant in the block, but there is. And if you actually know that area, there's probably another 15 to 20 meters worth of elevation gain, um, probably two, 200 meters back uh, behind this property. So um, we actually, during the construction period, we had to put two quite big ag lines, which is um, kind of a, something that you put under a house that goes horizontally across the property and um, the water disperses down the hill and then it hits the ag line and then gets dispersed around and into the street. So we actually had quite a few issues there with our build and having to deal with the amount of rain also in the Wollongong area. So that was uh, something quite interesting um, and yeah you can see that um, you know, on the left hand side of the block, you can see the fence and how it's ticking up. But what you can't see is uh, on that left hand property, the red brick house, um, at the back, right at the back of the block, that's when it really ticks up. So uh, you don't really look at the elevation gain at the front of the property, you look at it over the build site. So the build site's about five to six meters back from the street. And uh, from that, the start of the build site to the back of the build site, uh, we're looking at two and a half meter gain. And the steepest part of the, the back section is on the back right hand corner. Um, now, what essentially happened was um, my ex-wife uh, found this land. Now, um, we ended up, um, we were looking for properties at that time, anywhere around kind of the five, six to 700K mark, we were okay with. Um, we were looking at uh, the Sutherland Shire and trying to get a cheapie around the Engadine or Heathcote market. Um, but we ended up chasing the market for about six months and uh, things became much, very much unaffordable. And when we bought this, um, this land, Helensburg hadn't run yet. So there was a big price disparity between Helensburg and Heathcote and Engadine when now, if you look at this suburb, um, there's a lot of 1.1s to 1.3s in Helensburg, which is very similar to where the Engadine and the, um, and the Heathcote market is. And the, kind of the closer that you get to the station, uh, the, the more expensive the properties are. Now, what you can't see is um, when you're standing on the balcony looking to the front of the property, um, it actually goes out over a valley and in that valley is where the train station is, probably about 800 meters away. Um, and it does slope quite a way. So, um, so you do get quite nice views from that property and it was, it was very nice to sit out on that deck. Now, 
when we initially got the land we'd never built before and this was before I started my mortgage broking career I did have experience in margin lending and I did uh, just start in a big four bank uh, home loan home loan lending uh, but I didn't have as much experience as I have now so when I looked at that block um, we essentially snapped it up because we knew we couldn't find land anywhere else uh, there was pretty much nothing available um, so what we did was we we saw the property list and we ended up signing um it was it was actually quite funny there's a there's a, a real estate agent called ron kissel um amazing real estate agent in that area he works for ray white very hard worker um and he was he was had an oz tag game and he was in his shorts he was in his thongs and he met us in the car park at about 8 55 at night um, and ended up signing the contract which was great now, what we initially had with the land, um, what what we didn't initially know was that um, the three blocks, uh, so the main house and the two side land lots, uh, were sold almost within a day or two. But what we didn't know was that the land wasn't registered. And in the contract we didn't read, they had, had up to 12 months to register the land. So the one thing that we didn't um, know or like was the fact that we didn't check that. Um, we were trying to find builders to build within say one, two or three months. Um, it ended up being like a, it was like a nine or 10 month process. And I'll be honest with you, um, um, when we're looking at the, the particular house, um, it was a far cry very different from anything else that we thought originally. Now, when we walked into this, we had no idea about elevation gain. We had no idea about the water issues um, in the winter. And we had no idea about the fire protection issues because there's probably, um, if you go two kilometers in every direction of this house, there's National Park. All right, so it is. it was... Uh, what happens is when they look at a build and a site, um, a fire rating gets put on it. And uh, if you're a fire rating in the top two, um, it, it starts becoming a lot more um, specifications on a building. Now, we weren't in the top one. We were in uh, the low range of the second one. Um, and it ended up putting an extra, I think it was around $20,000 onto our build. So we had to have specific materials for the roof. Uh, we had to have specific doors on the outside and windows that were airlocked. We had to have a certain size water tank. Um, and we had to have a, a number of other items um, like a different type of door. Um, so that ended up pushing prices up and really when we started looking at this and we bought it for 355 we were initially thinking maybe uh, we could get um, a build of between 130 to 160 is what we thought. Now um, when you look at this block you notice how it's very uh, kind of wide at the front. Sorry it's very wide at the front. Um, but then at the back, it's actually quite narrow. So it was like uh, 18 to 19 meters at the front and then about 12 and a half to 13 meters at the back. So it really narrows. So you can only get so much depth in the build site before you go start going over the parameters of the, of the neighbor's house or being cl too close to the fence. So when we're looking at single uh, story homes, um, the the normal length of a single story home and you're not looking at the big ones was about 16 to 18 meters now the largest single homes were in excess of say 20 meters now you couldn't fit that on this site especially when we when we did the survey and we found out that over the build site there was about a two and a half meter rise now um, now I know compared to in the past um, you know when we're when we're looking at build sites elevation gain or loss when you start adding an extra meter to a build site i would say you're adding anywhere from about 50 to 70 grand on the build cost so when we came in here thinking that one let's try for a single story that didn't work 
Then we came in thinking that we can do a double story. Anything over about a meter and a half rise up to two meters is still workable, but it does involve a lot of um, retaining walls at the back. Now, uh, you can get the build site done right, but as soon as you add you know, a large amount of retaining walls on the back, the cost blows out quite heavily. So we found that we could have done a, a two-story build for about 230, um, but when we even started discussing on, um, you know, in regards to the the retaining walls at the back, we 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 the cost blew out so much that we just couldn't even consider it. So then the last design that we had a look at was um, was looking at kind of your front. Um, bearings and joist design so you've got front garage you've got front room you've got a void under the house and then you've got stairs up into a second level and then you've got a kitchen dining room um, and lounge room and then you've got all the bedrooms in the back with your with your laundry and things like that so let me actually just go on to it and I can show you so, so if we have a look at the at the build design that we ended up choosing, you can see that. Um, sorry, let me just um, see if I can find the the build site. Sorry, these are some of the pictures based in two thousand and twelve. So, let me just bring back the the front of the house, and we'll just stay on that. So, um, so yeah, we, we ended up finding a bearings and joist design with everything on the second level, which ended up working quite well. Um, the, the cost of the project ended up blowing out to $337,000, and that didn't include the driveway that you're looking at, the landscaping on the left. Um, what you don't see is on the left-hand side of the block, you know, all the grass on the um on the block as well as you know there there was actually about i think 40 you know 30 to 40 tons worth of dirt on the left hand side of the block at the front um, that i had to remove uh, from the build site so that ended up costing us a lot of money as well so um so the cost so the builder that we ended up using was Ming Cove homes they were uh, um, in the Wollongong area and they're actually very good on slope designs half of their builds that they do is on slopes um, and then we ended up coming up to about a 337k build um, and then yeah the driveway I think that was about 14,000 give or take and um, the flooring um, we actually had a funny story um, so the flooring um, got done and it's um, if you want to see some of the flooring uh, let's see if I can get you a picture yeah so you can see the flooring here um, um, the, it's actually uh, Italian tile that looks very similar to wood. Now, what actually happened was um, the builder didn't give us enough room for the tiles to go under um, the, the easings at the, at the bottom of the wall. So we actually had the tile guys that quoted us to take them all off, um, put the tiles down, and then put them back on. Now, uh, there was a dispute with the tiler and um, I had things documented um, and it ended up going to fair trading, so it was a really big problem, but we had a brand new house, a tiler comes in with his offsider, and the offsider was massive, he, he looked like he was uh, 160 kilos, he could barely get up the stairs, he was that big, looked like a massive bodybuilder, and he essentially went around all of the walls, with a pickaxe, with a hammer, and putting holes in all of the walls while he took off all the skirting. Now, um, we ended up um, getting that all done and the tiles put in, and then obviously we had to patch all the walls, and then we had a dispute with the tiler. Um, second dispute with the tiler, it was uh, an interesting one. Um, we, we gave them the plans, we showed them exactly where the tiles needed to be, um, and they quoted us, 
Obviously, there was a dispute on the skirting, uh, but again, we had it documented. Um, second uh, dispute was they wanted to charge us double for the stairs because apparently stairs are charged at a double rate because you have to go vertical and then horizontal. Um, so we had that problem as well, um, but then we ended up just sorting it out because we wanted them to go away. Um, and then, yeah, that's that's essentially what happened. And then um, the next thing that happened, uh, let's see if I can find your photo. Um, let's have a look. So that's the upstairs uh, living room. That's the stairs on the right hand side. That's the kitchen that we put in. We were very happy with that. Uh, that's kind of the back area. So there's a sliding door there, the stairs on the right hand side. The living room, the balcony and the kitchen is over there. And then all the bedrooms here with the bathroom over here. Um, and uh, that's the downstairs section uh, where the stairs are. Uh, that's the balcony. Um, and then that's the living room. Now, funny funny story is that um, when we had a look at this, um, that's the, the, the master bedroom, which is at the back of the house. Now, the carpet on that master bedroom was a Harvey Norman carpet and we paid extra for uh, a very nice little texture on it and um, uh, it was also stain proof. Now, we, we made the order um, and we weren't home so we gave the carpet guy the, um, the keys and then he came in. Now, um, they ended up putting all of the carpeting in the four bedrooms and it was labeled as Storm. Okay, so when we come home, when we came home, uh, we had black, sorry, black grey carpet um, in all of them, um, and obviously they they picked up the wrong carpet, they put in the wrong carpet, so then the guy had to come back, and it's it's a little bit of a weird process. He's got to put the hammer into the corner of uh, all of the sections to pull the carpet back up, but to lever it out, he's got to push the the hammer forward and when he did that he put an indentation into the the lower part of the wall on every one of the walls to get it out and then we had a again we had another dispute with Harvey Norman that this wasn't our problem and then they had to come back and putty it all up and fix it um, and obviously pay us out so this was my experience with a build guys um, I learned a lot I, I learned a lot regarding you know um, you know what to do regarding building or I'll talk you through uh, one other thing so let's see if we can find a photo so I'll just go through as many of the photos as I can and then I can talk to you about um, what happened halfway through our build so here's the design of the of the property so you've got a good idea of the design uh, but that's the that's the block the front and the back so you can see that it it does come back to a, a tighter area at the back of the lot now let's see if I can get you any of the the build photos because I know there was quite a few build photos over time okay that might be the the, the last photo sorry so let me talk you through it so when we started the build, when they did the, the test to see what was under it and what they were constructing on, uh, they do piling tests, okay, and they do that over the block. They found out that under the under the house was sandstone, and sandstone is normally very good because as long as you don't get the really um, the really really hard to excavate sandstone um, it's actually very good for pilings and uh, the sturdiness of what you're putting the pilings into now what happened was we um, they cut into the block and uh, it's almost like a big um, cut cut all right so before the build happens you just see this massive flat site with a big wall at the back all right, and um, what happened was there was about 110 to 120 metric tons worth of um, waste removal off the block. So what they did was they, they got in there with the excavator, did what they needed to do with the, they got about halfway through it, and then they couldn't get through the sandstone. 
Now, the original excavator that they had was a four-ton uh, excavator, and then they got an eight-ton excavator. Now, normally the eight-tonners are the biggest that you can get on a residential block. Then we found out that halfway through the excavation, they couldn't get through the rest. So they had to get the next size up, and it could hardly fit in the street. That's how big this excavator was. And not just that, they had to get it up. The driveway wasn't there. They had to get it up into the build site, and then it was just hammering away. So all the neighbors um, within a kilometer we're hearing our build site for over i think it was like two plus weeks to get the excavation done because it was the sandstone was so hard so a lot of the neighbors really didn't like us after that now what um essentially happened was once they got all the excavation done they dumped all of the waste on the front left of the property when you're looking at the property now there was 110 to 120 metric tons of dirt there and then uh, the builder calls me up and says what are you doing with this waste and I said what and I said uh, um, aren't you just going to remove it and he said no that's not included in the contract you've got to remove it so then I made a couple of calls to local council then I then I spoke with a couple of um, um, building uh, material companies to see if they wanted it and apparently because there was all soil and it wasn't sorted into different types n none of the places wanted it so I ended up getting charged I think it was 80 to uh, I think a hundred dollars a ton um, and and you know, halfway through a build, a build um, that's just about to start, um, I've got a build that's gone from 130 to 160 to 337, not including the flooring, not including the driveway. And then halfway through the build, they can't even start. And if I don't get this waste off the block, they're going to start penalizing me because I'm not fulfilling my portion of the contract. All right, um, so that's another thing. Making sure you're checking the contract and what it's in included. And if you don't understand, always getting your solicitor. So then what happened was we, we got to that stage and within a week we had to figure out a solution. So we found a place to, to get it. Then we um, had to go around calling all these different companies to try and figure out you know, how, how much we were going to get away. Now, obviously, we underquoted the amount that we had. So the guy with a, um, he had a semi, uh, a semi. Um, originally, when he looked at the the amount, the amount that I was quoting, he knew it was much more. And I said, well, if you can try and get it done in a day, please do. But I know you've got to do multiple trips, so let's see how you go. And then I was being told that if he couldn't get it done in a day, I'd not only have to hire the excavator that he had, plus the truck. And he said, you get charged a full day. You don't get charged a, an hourly rate or anything. So he was going to charge me an extra, I think it was an extra over two grand just for the day um, extra. So he ended up getting it done by about six o'clock that day, which was great. All right, but that was a cost of I think it turned out to be like eleven thousand dollars total that I hadn't accounted for. Now, um, my my ex wife and I we were we were working full time. We did have a few buffers in our savings, but it, those buffers were being taken away. So what I suggest is that when um, people are looking at blocks, one, make sure that the block is square or rectangle. Okay, make sure that it's a standard cookie cutter size. Make sure that there's not enough elevation gain or loss over the block. And every meter that you're looking at, um, make sure that you understand that that extra meter worth of elevation, it doesn't look like much, but add an extra 50 grand in the build cost minimum. Okay, then if you start looking at um, irregular size blocks, cut out 60 to 70 percent of all the builders because they don't want to touch it uh, and most of the builds can't fit then when you're looking at building contracts 
Um, make sure that you understand that some are turnkey, which means you turn the key in the door and nothing else needs to be done. And then the others are non-turnkey. So a lot of the time you enter a contract which is non-turnkey, think that the price is much better. But as soon as you add all the fixtures and fittings and the driveway and the and the um, the tiling and the flooring and um, the skirting and everything, um, the outside uh, portions, so the grass and everything, um, you're much higher than a turnkey package. So a lot of the time you need to understand that before you start. Now, a lot of people go into builds thinking that they can, they can get something done and they don't have buffers. Now, if I didn't have um, probably a 20% buffer on the original build cost that I thought I needed to have, and then I didn't have a buffer on top of that buffer, um, I would have been halfway through this build and bankrupt. So this is why I tell everyone that's going through with a house and land package or buying land and building that you have to have significant buffers. I don't care if it's a cookie cutter block. I don't care if it's a house and land package that's already set up ready for you, you to use. There's a lot of different things that can happen in a build that you may um, need buffers. Okay, um, 11 grand in... Uh, excavation, um, extra fireproofing that I didn't think that was needed, um, uh, meathead tiler that came through and, and destroyed all my walls, or uh, the driveway that I thought was eight grand ended up coming in at 14 grand, or um, none of the block had any uh, grass on it after the build, so I had to uh, spend in excess of eight grand doing all the landscaping and gardening um, that you know I didn't account for. So you've got all these extra things, and you know your fixtures and fittings. You walk through these house and land packages and home worlds, and you don't understand that the properties that you're walking through have all of the best fixtures and fittings, all of them. So your standard 300 gram build turns into a 430 to a 450k build with those fixtures and fittings. So you walk through, you get all happy, but then you don't understand that that's not the base model that you're initially negotiating on. All right, so um, I hope this video has helped a lot of people. I hope you understand, you know, you know, all the different ways to go through with a build, you know, what things that I've gone through, what I've learned from in the past. And really, um, even with all these cost blowouts, I've got to tell you, the property nearly sold for um, close to a million dollars. All right, so we ended up coming out with, you know, over kind of $250,000 after all costs. So even though we we had all these extra things that came up, um, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of money was made um, buying this land and building. And I think a good portion of that was the market because the build did take 18 months when we wanted to be in there within 10 months. Okay, so... Um, I think the market was a lot of that, um, but also the scarcity of land in those areas. So, you know, I, I'm not against building again and buying land and building, but I'd be a lot more, I guess, um, understanding of the pitfalls of doing construction and what things to notice and, and what to look at on a contract and what to see during a build and what to anticipate while you're going through the process. Um, so I am a mortgage broker based in Sydney, so if you need any help with this, I, I definitely can help. I hope this video has added a lot of value to you. Um, hit that like button for me, hit the subscribe button, and uh, leave me a comment if you like this kind of content. We'll see you on the next video. All right then, bye.